Hello, everybody. My name's Andrew Kelleher, and I'm the marketing leader here at Forza. I'm really excited today to be joined by Dominic DiNardo, our co-founder and CEO. Uh, welcome, Dominic. Hi, Andy. Hi, everybody. Great to get you on. And uh, as discussed a couple of minutes ago, I really want to talk about a couple of very interesting industry reports that have come out that really point to the value of vertical AI. And maybe if we could get started, um, touch on this this recent report from McKinsey on rescuing the decade and really what Gen AI and vertical AI means to the industry and where we are today. Yeah, I, this is a really, for me, this is a very influential report. I really got a lot of value out of it. And you can see on page two, actually, if we just jump straight in, this chart for me was highly, highly illuminating because basically I, I encourage people who are interested in this to go and download the report from McKinsey. McKinsey put out a lot of great stuff like this in the public domain. But you look at this chart, you can see how the CP, top CPG companies in the world and the S&P uh, 500, you can see how their performance is largely like the same line, right? When you, this is a total shareholder uh, return, I think, is the charts measuring it. So like it's kind of a valuation type metric, I guess, for, for investments, right? You know, you can sort of see how, you know, the CPG companies had predictable growth, which I think was um, typically 5% was a good number to have. You can see that, you know, it was going to get uh, returns were predictable, the margins were predictable, and it was like a good solid bet for an investment. You can see that, you know, after about, I and mean, you can see that they, they do a great job here of splitting this into euros. The classic formula was just going so strong. Everyone loves that. Then in era two, growth becomes elusive. You know, in the second half of the teens, if you like, the 2015, 2015 being the middle of it, just ahead of the COVID era, where, of course, boom, everything starts to change. And right now, era four, you know, this inflationary era where the squeeze on margin uh, is happening because of um, people are more expensive, uh, your supply chain is more expensive. And really, there's a real like, well, what to do? How do I get back to that golden era we all happened at the start of the century? So, so I think it does a really nice, concise way of like um, like summarizing, I guess, what we all, all live through, whether you're in this industry or just somebody who has to pay for a pint of milk. I feel like we've all lived this, right? I don't know. What was your take, Andy? Yeah, no, I, I think you're, you're dead right there. And I think what I like is the report then goes on to talk about, well, what do we do about this, right? There's, um, there's, there's a lot of different approaches and, you know, they talk about both top and bottom line growth. Um, um, but really for me, so much of this comes down to, to, reinventing productivity to get back to growth. And I think whilst this report goes into that in, in, in quite some detail, uh, I think another report we've seen this week um, from Accenture on reinventing the consumer goods value chain, I think really gets into how across the whole value chain, we can start to to, to hit that head on. Yeah, this is, this is also for me, like a, a very influential report from my friends at Accenture. Well, uh, I think you see your, your go to the chart with the things you yeah. can actually do, you can see what, like, you know, the impact of generative AI. And so there's, there's a couple of things in this that I would quibble with, like, you know, automate order capture, with smart sorting orders, et cetera. That I would say as a bit of a technical purist is a, is probably better done with applied AI with predictive algorithms. But nevertheless, the point is with either generative AI or uh, applied AI, what I would term for the consumer goods industry is vertical AI, right? With this, you have a chance to reinvent productivity in a completely new way. And I think that um, you're going to see this now, and, and this is upon us. Now, this is not this is not like us talking about the future. I know when I look at what Forza is doing or other peer group companies in technology, the application of artificial intelligence on everyone's user experience and productivity is going to be dramatic like highly, highly dramatic. And you hear lots of people of hyperbole saying exponential or 10x. You know, it's easy to throw these things around, but I think that if, if your experience of AI has been something like, you know, asking chat GPT to write a poem or perhaps you played with co-pilot and try to <laughs> nudge it into building a presentation or something, those are all great, interesting things. And they have a value in themselves in the same way someone might ask their AI engine to help the writer a, a, an email to complain about a parking ticket, there is value in that. That does save you time and energy. But when you talk about vertical artificial intelligence, when you start to apply it in a very specific way, 
the value is dramatic when it comes to things like, hey, you know what? One of my employees is um, off sick. I need to think about all the visits and planning of routes that are going to happen this week. Can you please help me reorganize and fix that? That's something that could take somebody, you know, hours and hours of like, where are you exactly and what's going to happen? And with the application of vertical AI, this kind of stuff starts to become dramatically more efficient. And then, of course, it's not just that, it's the effectiveness of it. Because, you know, the thing, I, 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 going back to that example of applied AI, predict the order that somebody should place, you know, just and get it right. Make sure it's put the right promotions, the right kind of discounting logic, a lack of mistakes, accurate, applied artificial intelligence was vertical. And you can, so you can see that your human productivity, both in terms of efficiency, I have more time now because I, I do less administrative stuff or even actually quite involved tasks, plan my promotions, write account plans. Um, I, I, I can do much, much more involved jobs, plus I can do them all much, much faster. Yep. In, in, I think, in fact, you said it, and maybe you, you, to bounce it back to you, Andy, it's a bit like having a sales coach on your shoulders or something, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think you can see here that, you know, along the top here, we're talking about sales, marketing, service, all the different use cases. And I think the real power of, of, of AI, and albeit vertical AI in the industries, is when you make every single employee more productive and more effective. And, um, you know, we can have the best, the best, best managers and the coaches in the world, but there's no way that with the best hiring in the world, we're going to give every single employee that perfect coach that's always on, that's around 24 seven, that's going to shape every aspect of their day. And I think that's really what's needed to, to create this and reinvent this level of productivity. Andy, like, you, 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 I know you know, but uh, for the benefit of the audience, like yesterday I tried to call everybody in a company, got yeah. about, <laughs> takes a lot longer than you think. <laughs> you know, like, and we, we, uh, I got about um, twenty five percent, thirty percent of the way through, like literally relentlessly phoning people all over the place in different countries, asking how are you using AI today, what tools are you using, and then after talking about it and how they're being used, what productivity savings do you feel you're getting in terms of either time saved or more effective time? Like, give me yep. a percentage in your day, and I got a wide range of everything from five percent. To one person actually said 50%. I said, Are you sure they tip they, they tapered it a little bit back to 30. But the standing average for an afford employee using generic AI tools was 15 to 20% more productive. And top use cases were uh, really interesting: research, studying uh, customer customers and understanding what they're doing, their objectives. So research, but also researching technology researching like uh, manuals and instructions, like uh, helping to uh, um, uh, fix grammar and like what I'd call probably Uber word processing. But, but you know, I, what I saw was um, a high, high adoption. And if that's before we've actually using things like, if you imagine for our customers, vertical AI tools, you can only imagine what's going to happen when you start to put specificity into here about how dramatic it's going to be. Um, so I I'm, I'm really do strongly believe that we are um, entering an age where all the prior assumptions about how productive people are and whatever their roles is going to change. And you know what? It's going to affect everybody. It doesn't matter if you're a white collar job or even a blue collar job. There's going to be elements that are going to become so much more productive than what they were in the past. Yeah. And actually, just to, just to plug what you said there, um, we were so the marketing team at Affords have been so excited by by that calling spree that you did yesterday. And in, in typical Dominic way, you documented everything as well. That we've we've actually turned this this whole piece of work into into what we call in the uh, the Affords AI Pulse. And I think there's a lot of learnings for other leaders in other companies about what it means to you know, truly lead from the top and, and make sure that every employee is, is harnessing and leveraging AI in, in their day jobs. And I think um, whilst the report and, and your findings show that, you know, different, different different people and different teams are using it in different ways, the truth is, is eventually we, we need everybody to be leveraging it at a consistent level to, to get to the place that we need. So watch, watch that and we'll have a blog coming out on that. Mm. Now, I've got that. You touched on vertical AI and another um, 
report that I know you're a big fan on is this uh, this this Bessemer report on the future of vertical AI and really how you know for industry users it, it really is everything in a class of its own. Yeah, touch a bit on this report. Yeah, no, this is like uh, so for those of you listening and you're hearing these expressions vertical AI and you probably hear AI here everywhere on agents and all sorts of different terminology. Let me take a just a moment to re-explain it. And the reason why I like this report is Bessemer, um, who are a leading uh, technology venture capitalist, are writing a report about it. And they basically, they get it. They've understood that when you look at AI use cases, whether they be generative or whether they be um, um, more standard in nature, these use cases applied in a vertical have almost exponential power. So if you think about it, like, um, you know, you might go to your standard AI engine and ask it questions and things, but if you, I don't know, God forbid you have some sort of medical issue where you want to do a medical diagnosis, you probably would prefer that you were not using a generic generative horizontal technology. You would want to have, you know, you'd want to use an engine very specific on, you know, uh, medical or even indeed subcategories of, of the medical area of uh, doing your diagnosis, wouldn't you? Like, you know, it's kind of, yep. you would have a higher degree of trust. Vertical AI, it, well, actually, that's an example of vertical AI. So for a force of vertical AI is everything to do with the route to market that a consumer products company does. Food, beverage, healthcare, whether it be promotions, whether it be visit planning, segmentation, scheduling, order capture, and so many more. So for Forza, we completely align with this viewpoint Bessema has, and we, uh, uh, our early research and work, we're going to be running a workshop actually on this and um, to do a briefing for people in October. Um, our, our initial findings are that these productivity gains for users are going to be really, really dramatic because it's just so many facets to this. It's multimodal. You can speak to it. You can take photographs. It doesn't have to be typing anymore. You know, it can do things like in your job that are just like, you know, whether it be like, please reorganize my week, prioritize only my top 10 customers. Like whatever you want to do, you're going to literally talk to this 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 software now and it can execute that for you. So something that might have taken you a long time to work out your top 10 customers and to find out where they are and to do an optimal route planning, now it's somehow being handled by a vertical AI system. It's completely driving functions, you know, in a in a vertical data model just for your industry. It, it's highly, I, I can't emphasize enough how impactful we're going to see this is going to be. So, um, yeah, great report from Bessemer. I, I've, I, I read that, I only came out, I think this morning or perhaps yesterday, and um, I thought this is so aligned with like what we are seeing. And um, this, this whole area is moving very, very quickly, but it's also very, very real. So people should really pay attention to this. It's not, it's not one of those subjects, I believe, that you can actually think, do you know what, I'll wait a year and see what happens. I think you have to stay very close to it because if you wait a year and see what happens, you run the risk of your competitors using it faster. And it's a bit like, you know, if you have a hundred, I don't know, a hundred sales rep in your company and a hundred sales rep in your competitor, that's going to feel like you're competing against 110, 120, 150 people now because of the sheer speed and the time, the effectiveness that these people will have. Um, very, very dramatic. I, 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 if you're in London or if you can get to London, uh, please uh, sign up. Um, we have got a limited amount of space actually for this. Uh, so we'll be um, uh, probably uh, only advertising for a brief amount of time because we kind of, we kind of know this is going to be a... Um, sold out, I guess. Um, it's free, but, but we're expecting a, a high turnout. Um, are you excited about this, Andy? I am, yeah. I think um, I think as a company, we you know we get outside of the, the four walls of our office and um, you know we look to external resources, as you've seen from the reports, but you know also attending AI meetups and other events. And I think you'll um, a couple of things really stand out for me. You made a good point about Everybody needs to embrace AI now, not next year, because it's important. But also, everybody needs to be sort of, you know, not intimidated by AI. This isn't some, you know, geeky thing that's too too difficult to get your head around. This is happening. 
and it's very accessible and it's very easy. So, you know, if you're in London, come to this briefing event and, you know, get to know us and let us share our experiences with you. And, you know, especially if you're in the consumer goods industry, you won't, you won't get to a better event like this all year in terms of how it can add value to your business. So there's a QR code there for you to scan or a links on the front page of our website. And, you know, please, please go sign up and we look forward to seeing you there. And if you actually, if you're playing this and listening and you have questions about anything, you'd like us to talk on any subject at the event, um, can't promise we'll get to everything, but please let us know actually. And uh, we'll try and, we'll try and address it. Excellent. Thanks. And there's a, there's a lot of good reports referenced in this, so we'll make sure we put them in the comments of the uh, right, yeah. of this post. So, uh, yeah, please go ahead and read them. And uh, any feedback and questions, we'd love to hear from you. Take Thank care, you. everyone. Thanks so much. Thanks, Andy.